friends. Today we're talking about Jesus and Nicodemus. We're going to talk about where that story is found, why it's important, and what does it mean to be born again. This is part of Bible Drill Green Cycle. For more information, check out the description below. Hi friends, I'm Miss Nancy Ruth. And I'm Mr. Roger. We want to see kids living for Jesus. So let's get started. Jesus and Nicodemus is found in John chapter 3, verses 1 through 21. This is the visual I've created, or actually um, Kristen helped me create this. This is to help us remember where this is found. And we're going to know why it's at night in the fire in a little bit. But I want you to think of this picture in your head. Do you notice here one of our gospel characters? Do you see him? He's right there. That's the one we have for John. And I'll show you why in just a minute. And then the numbers are where this story is found in the book of John. It's in John chapter 3, verses 1 through 21. So let's look at where this is found in the Bible. Luke, John, Acts. There are four books named John in the Bible. The John without any numbers is the gospel. If John has a number in front of it, it's part of the general epistles in the race to the end of the Bible. The first four books of the New Testament are the gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Acts comes afterward. To find the Gospels, open your Bible in the middle, then open the right half in the middle. You should be in the Gospels or close to them. All right, now we've got that. Let's go back and see what is this story, Jesus and Nicodemus. The good place to start is who is this Nicodemus guy? Nicodemus was a Pharisee. That means he knew the law well and he tried to live in a way that pleases God. Now, um, the Pharisees get a bad rap in the New Testament, and we'll see why in a little bit. Um, but this is real, what it really meant to be a Pharisee. They knew the law well, they knew scripture well, and they tried to live in a way that pleases God. Nicodemus was also a member of the Sanhedrin, which is the Jewish ruling council. Now, some Pharisees, this is how they got a bad name. Some Pharisees thought they were better than other people because they knew the law well and they did so much better at doing things that they thought pleased God better than other people. This is what Jesus really got after them for. Um, and in fact, he <laughs> called them some really nasty things. He called them whitewashed tombs where they look good on the outside and inside they're filled with dead man's bones. Not a nice thing to say to people. What he was saying was, you're, you're trying so much to look good, but your hearts are not right with God. Now, um, this made the Pharisees mad. Some of the Pharisees would come in the crowds with the crowds all around and watching and listening, and they would test Jesus to try to trick him into saying something that wasn't true. But they, here's the key. They did it in front of the crowds in the middle of the day. Nicodemus was different. Nicodemus had some questions, but he didn't want to trick and trap Jesus. And so he didn't want to talk to him in front of a whole bunch of people. Instead, Nicodemus came to Jesus at night. And this was to show that he was serious and he really wanted to know the answers to these questions. And he came to Jesus and he said, he called him rabbi and teacher. And he says, I know that you are from God because the miracles you're doing, who only somebody who is from God can do these miraculous things. And Jesus told him something very strange. He said, I tell you the truth. No one can see the kingdom of God unless he is born again. And Nicodemus was like, I don't get it. <laughs> what do you mean? How am I as a grown man supposed to go back and be a little baby to be born again? I don't understand. Jesus, help me out. And Jesus said, okay, no, you don't get it. Here's how this works. Um, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless he is born with water and the spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh and spirit gives birth to spirit. And Jesus said, just like the wind, you know how when the wind blows, you can see the effects of the wind. You can see the leaves moving in the trees. You can see sometimes trash blowing down the road. You can see the effects of the wind, but you can't see the wind itself. You can't see the spirit itself, but you can see the effects, the things that the spirit is doing. And in the same way, it's different between being born like a physical baby and being born of the spirit. It's not something you can really see. You just see the effects of it. Um, Nicodemus said, um, I still don't get it. <laughs> I still don't understand. So Jesus said, OK, look, <laughs> you're a teacher of the law, right? You know the law really well. So remember when the Israelites left Egypt, 
Okay, they um, left Egypt and we have a video about that. You can check that out up here. Um, so the Israelites left Egypt and they were in the wilderness and God provided manna to feed them and God provided water for them and all the things. And the people complained and complained and complained. It wasn't good enough. Why did you bring us here to die? We don't like this. We don't like the food. We did, 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 did. <laughs> and God got really fed up. He said, oh, no, we're done. <laughs> and he sent a bunch of snakes into the camp. And these snakes were venomous. And if somebody got bitten, they died. And the people were like, oh, no, we really messed up. <laughs> we forgot that God is God. He's not some made up thing. He really is God. And he can hear us. <laughs> and we're very sorry. Um, we're sorry for complaining. Uh, Moses, go and speak to God and pray to God for us and ask for forgiveness. So Moses did. He prayed for the people and said, um, God, you know, forgive the people. What should we do? God told Moses to set up a bronze serpent on a pole in the middle of the camp. And if you were bit by one of the venomous snakes and you looked up at the bronze serpent on the pole, then you wouldn't die. And so they had to believe what God promised and believe enough to take the action to look up at the serpent so that they would um, not die. All right. And so he, uh, Jesus is reminding Nicodemus of this. And he says, in the same way, just like this. The son of man, meaning himself, meaning Jesus, has to be lifted up. He's talking about the cross to die and come back to life again in the same way so that we have a choice we have to make. Here's that choice. Do you know John 316? I bet you do. And if not, here's a video about it. Oh, other side. <laughs> here's a video about it so you can memorize it. This is a very common verse. It says, for God to love the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Do you know what verse comes after? It's just as important. This is John 3, 17. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. And Jesus goes on to say, um, whoever believes in Jesus is not condemned. But if you don't believe in Jesus, you're already condemned. Now, how does that work? Jesus doesn't explain this here, but he explains it other places. And he says, look, sin separates us from God, right? The grumbling and things separated the people from God. And there were consequences to that. And there's consequences to when we sin too. And that, sit, that consequence is separation from God. Okay, that's a problem we can't solve all by ourselves. But just like the people, children of Israel, we can repent. We can say, Lord, I'm sorry, please forgive me and turn back to God. But we can talk to God ourselves. We don't have to go through Moses or somebody else. We repent and we say, I'm sorry, Lord, I want to live for you. Please forgive me. And because of Jesus, because he died on that cross and came back to life again to take our punishment for sin. If we believe in him, we will be saved and get to live with God forever. That's what Jesus was talking to Nicodemus about. Um, and it's interesting that he doesn't completely spell it out here, but he will later on. But I wanted you to hear that here. But listen. OK, so after this, he Jesus says, it's kind of like this. Light has come into the world, but the people don't like the light because it shows all the bad things that they're doing. They like to stay in the dark and stay hiding where people can't see all the things that they're doing that they're not supposed to be doing. And so when, when we come into the light, when we come and we ask God to examine our hearts and our lives, it can be a scary thing because God starts to show us ways that we're sinning and we're not obeying God that we didn't even see. That's scary. But it doesn't have to be scary because if we confess those sins and believe in Jesus, God forgives our sins and wipes our sins away and helps to make us more and more like Jesus. But not everybody wants to do that. They like to hide in the, the dark. They like the bad things that they're doing. They don't want to give those up. And so that's a choice that we have to make. That's a choice that you have to make. And that's a choice that Nicodemus had to make. So what did Nicodemus decide? Well, it doesn't say in John chapter 3. But let's look at some evidence of later on in his life. There was a time when Jesus was teaching and the Pharisees really didn't like what he was saying. <laughs> and they wanted to have Jesus arrested. Nicodemus stood up and he said something really interesting. Look at this. Doesn't the law say we need to hear from Jesus what he's doing before we condemn him? Now, this doesn't sound like full, full acceptance of Jesus at this point, but he's still wanting to hear from Jesus himself his side of the story. 
And that's fair, don't you think? If there's an argument, you need to hear both sides of the story. Okay, he wanted to hear Jesus' side of the story. But you know how the Pharisees reacted? They said, what do you think you're doing? Are you like one of his followers? Some of the, the hick people, the, the people I don't know any better from Galilee? <laughs> no, he was trying to give Jesus a fair hearing. Okay, let's listen and hear what else happened. Eventually, the Pharisees got so mad at Jesus, they arranged to have him arrested, put on trial, and put to death on the cross, and they thought that would be the end of it. After Jesus died, Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus, and it says specifically it was the Nicodemus who went to Jesus in the night, they took the body of Jesus down from the cross and put it in the grave as fast as they could before sunset when the Sabbath day started, and they weren't supposed to do any work. And so on the third day, do you know what happened? Jesus came back to life again. That's right. It was God's way of saying, I accept that payment. I accept that punishment that you took for those who believe in you. He, he, Jesus paved the way for all of us. All we have to do is trust and believe in him. And so my guess is that Jesus, that Nicodemus, even though he didn't trust in Jesus right away and was still kind of figuring it out, the fact that he aligned himself with Jesus after his death and before his resurrection tells me that I think he was convinced. So now I have a challenge for you. What are you going to do now that you know the way to be right with God? What decision are you going to make? Are you going to accept and follow him now? Are you going to keep learning more like Nicodemus did? I hope that you will think and pray about that. Ask God to teach you and show you who Jesus is. And I challenge you to memorize John 3.16. And there's a link to, I keep getting my fingers mixed up. There's a link to how to memorize that up here. You also might like this other video. <laughs> this one over here. Thanks for listening, friends, and I'll see you next time. Be sure to like, subscribe, comment, and share this with your friends. See you next time.